What's up everyone? All right, so the title of this video is Go Short, Get Wrecked. This is another installment of Driving with Ross. All right, so uh, let's talk about it. Now, I'm making a couple episodes here because we have a stock that went up 978% today. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to get on my soapbox and uh, preach a little bit about why I think short selling is risky. Now listen, I know there's a lot of short sellers out there who are very profitable traders and there's short sellers in our community who are very profitable. So I'm not trying to completely trash short selling um, in general, but there are some flaws to every strategy, as you well know. And today was a good example of the big flaw in short selling. And this is a problem that a lot of beginner short sellers struggle with. So even if you're a short seller, I hope that you find this episode helpful. If you're a long trader, you're gonna get a laugh out of it too. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, today we have a stock that goes up 978%, starts at 55 cents, goes up to just under $5 a share. All right, this is insane. Now. A short seller strategy for a lot of small cap momentum uh, traders is basically as a stock is going up, start adding short. So short, 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 short as a stock is going up. And then as it comes back down, the idea is to cover it for profit, right? So you start shorting a stock at a dollar, you add more at $1.15, $1. twenty. Just as it's going up, you're shorting, 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 and then you're waiting for that reversal. And you might say, well, why not just wait for the reversal? It's because those can happen so quick that you miss them. So why are people, some people attracted to short selling? Well, uh, aside, you know, any, any possible jokes aside, um, a, a real reason is that it feels easier for, for a lot of traders. And you know what? It felt easier for me, not just being a short seller, but being a reversal trader where you're shorting extensions or buying stocks that are weak. Why does that feel easier? To me, when I was getting started early on, it felt easier to buy that first green candle after 10 consecutive red candles of a sell-off than to try to figure out where to sort of chase the momentum, which in that case is going down. So inversely, for traders who are shorting small cap stocks, I think a lot of them struggle with not being quite sure of where to get in, and they just kind of feel like they're invariably buying it high, and so it just feels easier to just wait for it to top out and then to go short for the ride back down. And that is true in some ways that that is a little bit easier, but there's no such thing as a strategy that's easy. You guys know this. And my strategy has its flaws as well. One of the flaws for my strategy is that I really require both volatility and liquidity. And so in the last month, we've been in a market where we haven't had a lot of liquidity. And so and we've had a little bit of volatility, but without the liquidity, it's been very hard for me to trade. And you know, so I haven't done as well as I would do in a market where we've got high volatility and high liquidity. In this, in the last six weeks or so, this has been a market that has been more friendly for short selling because stocks that start to pop up a little bit, they don't have that real strong wave of momentum behind them to send them to the next level. And so they kind of, they go up and they, and they start, they just sort of roll back real fast. And so one of the things that, uh, that I've noticed is that there's been a lot of traders on YouTube and just out there talking about shorting basically anything that goes up. And so any stock that naturally I'm trading, which I'm only trading stocks going up, are the type of stocks that short sellers are like, okay, that's, that's, that's what I'm gonna focus on. This is going up, long traders are buying it, let's start shorting. So we start adding a little bit and add more, add more, add more, add more. And you know what? That creates the balance of the market. And you see in this market where there hasn't been as much really strong momentum, there's, a, there's, there's more on the sell side than there is on the buy side. So that imbalance has pulled the, the range tighter and you see these stocks rolling over. Now, the thing is, if you're someone who's shorting really strong stocks and then you get wrecked, it's, it's hard to feel bad for you because listen, 
the strategy of just shorting something that is ultra strong, super, super strong, and adding, 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 that is a hope-based strategy. You're hoping that it's gonna reverse, but there's no I, a real identifier that it is reversing. It's still going higher. And so top ticking, top ticking, top ticking, top ticking, it's like it works, it works, it works, it works, it works until it doesn't. And so what I've seen with a lot of big short sellers out there that try to employ that strategy is they'll they'll be green, 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 and then they'll have a margin call and they'll blow up their account. They fund the account again, and then they're green, 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 green with high accuracy, but not exactly because they're cutting their losses quick, but because they can be stubborn. They just keep adding and adding and adding and adding, but eventually you run out of one of two things. You run out of shares to borrow, or you run out of buying power, right? So availability of shares to borrow is a real problem with uh, shorting uh, small caps. And then the obvious problem of running out of buying power is, um, it of course, makes it impossible to continue to add to your position. And so what we ended up seeing today was this stock that just went absolutely crazy. You know, it goes from 55 cents up to a dollar, and it had this period of really high volume between about a dollar 15, a dollar 10, and a dollar 25. And I mean, I, you could tell that people were hitting it short with 50,000 shares, 100,000 shares, shorting really, really big size. And then all of a sudden, it starts to break out and it goes up to 125, 135. And as you saw, probably for those that watched my other episode where I was talking about that. Um, the, the parabolic squeeze, uh, it ended up going up to $1.50, $1.70, then two, and it's just jumping higher. And now what's happening is all you're seeing are buy orders. They're buy orders from two sets of people. They're buy orders from traders who are chasing the move, which are long bias momentum traders, and there's long buyers from shorts who are covering, and then there's also long buyers who are brokers who are auto-liquidating accounts because you have a stock that's going up 500, 800, 900%. And so there's this inherent risk with shorting something that's really strong. So I sometimes think to myself, um, no, no to, to back up. So I, I told you early on how when I was getting started, I thought reversal trading made more sense. But there's something that I did a little bit differently. I waited for confirmation. So I would typically wait for 10 plus consecutive green candles going up or 10 plus consecutive red candles going down. I would look for a bottoming tail doji or a topping tail doji. And then that next candle to drop would be, that's where I would take my entry with a stop at the high. Now the problem for me with that strategy was that because I was being very particular about the setup I was looking for, there are sometimes days it would go by without having a really good short setup. You know, I wasn't just adding, adding, adding on anything that was strong or buying, buying, buying anything that's weak. You know, if you just start buying anything that's weak and it goes lower, it's like, well, yeah, because stocks can go a lot lower, right? Stocks can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. That's that old saying. So, you know, Bill Ackman shorting Tesla, getting squeezed, well, you know, that's what happens when you short what in that time was one of the most popular stocks on Wall Street. And on an intraday basis, shorting a stock that everyone is focusing on that is super, super strong, you've got to be able to cut your losses quickly. But again, this then gets into a, a, a challenge where when you get into these low liquidity traps, you can get stuck. And so what I ended up finding was that in fact, I found more consistency by focusing on bullish patterns to the long side. Because, you know, in the example of shorting a stock at a dollar that goes to four dollars, you're shorting a dollar, best case scenario went to zero. You know, you're up a dollar a share. Worst case scenario goes to five or ten dollars, you're down five. You're you inherently have a negative risk to reward ratio. So on any given day, when you're shorting something that's really strong, if you're stubborn, and of course good short sellers who end up having, you know, a lot of success and a history of profitability, they, they naturally will still have this tendency of lots and lots of winners, big loss. Lots and lots of winners, big loss. But 
other traders can have that as well. The question is how big is that loss? Are you cutting it before your account gets blown up? And if you are, then that's really, really good. If you're not, then this is clearly an area where there's room, a lot of room for improvement. Because holding and hoping, whether it's long or short, that's not a viable strategy. You know, that, that's luck and it works and it works until it doesn't. So you really have to get dialed in with the risk parameters of the strategy that you're trading. And so one of the things that I've found, and I've found this consistently over you know, long periods of time, has been that I have to be thinking about my stop before I take a trade. What's my stop? What's my stop? And unfortunately, in the case of buying something that's weak, that's selling off, and I've done this before, I buy something that's weak, and it goes lower and it halts down. And now all of a sudden it's gapping lower and I wasn't able to really manage my risk because there were things that were out of my control, the halts, the quick flush. And now I'm in a situation where I become emotionally compromised because I'm faced with a much bigger loss than I was planning for. And I have to either cut it on resumption, in which case I'm selling when there's no buyers, so I'm gonna get massive slippage. And that's the problem with covering a short position is it's squeezing up like on AM, AM today, is that you're now covering when there's no sellers. And that means you're getting a ton of slippage going up all the way to the next halt. So, I mean, listen, these are the risks of trading. Trading is risky. Short selling, I think is especially risky because you can lose an infinite amount of money. Uh, but there are traders out there who find success short selling. However, if you're someone that is just shorting anything that's strong, I think that you've got to really look carefully at that strategy because what I'm afraid is going to happen is you're going to keep doing that and you're going to keep, keep having these stocks like this one today, but it happens, you know, we had HUDI and SATX and HKD. It, it, it doesn't feel like it makes sense for there to be a percentage of the time where you are blowing up. You know, for me as a long bias trader, I'm not gonna say I haven't had big losses because I have. Uh, however, my biggest green day is much bigger than my biggest red day. And that, I was talking with um, Jess today, who's got his 500K badge. His biggest green day is 63,000. His biggest red day is 17,000, right? So that, that's, I mean, you can work with that. that. That makes sense. Now, at the end of the day, biggest green day, biggest red day, those are just two days. What are your, what's your accuracy? What's your profit to loss ratio? But those are two things that are really interesting. And I could save it for another episode, but I'll just quickly say that there's a relationship where traders that have really, really good profit loss ratios usually have lower accuracy. Because they're swinging usually for home runs. But when they hit, they get that big winner, so their profit loss ratio is phenomenal. But you know, out of 10 trades where you swing for a home run, maybe only three of them connect. So you could have a great profit loss ratio and 30% accuracy and still be a profitable trader. And if you're okay with being wrong 70% of the time and you can brush it off because your stops are tight, you're getting in on support, whatever it is, that's fine. On the other hand, you have traders that have um, negative profit loss ratios where their average losers are massive, but their accuracy is like super, super high. And so again, that, that comes with a different set of challenges. You generally have high accuracy, so you've got really high confidence, but then you know every X number of weeks, you have a massive loss that wipes it all out. Now what I had as a beginner trader was a poor profit loss ratio and poor accuracy. So I was just struggling across the board. But I'll tell you, for me, what helped me turn the corner was focusing on higher quality setups. And for me, I don't like to take trades where I'm immediately gonna be in the red. That's really hard for me. So short sellers who are able to add, 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 you're managing the loser, the, the, the first, you know, the, the majority of the trade, in fact, until it resolves. And I give you a lot of credit for being able to do that because that's something that's really hard for me to do. I do not like trying to manage losers. I wanna get into a breakout trade. And essentially, if I time the breakout correctly, whether it's a half dollar, whole dollar, first candle, make a new high. If I time it correctly, I'm gonna be green almost immediately. And, and 
I'm not going to look back. I might never be red on the trade. I mean, basically, you know, of course you get in, there's a spread, but uh, I'm almost never red on the trade. I get in at the right, if, and for me as a momentum trader, if my timing is right, I will not be red on the trade. And so, you know, that, that for me, with the strategy of really trying to manage risk, especially when trading in a small account, that was like the only way for me. I just had to focus on really high quality precision trading. Get in, get out, boom, quick trade. Get in, get out, boom, quick trade. And you know, that for me was really only possible trading to the long side. So, you know, at the end of the day, your strategy is a reflection of your personality. Um, so, you know, I'm risk averse and I of course do take loss, but for the most part, as soon as I get into a trade, I'm looking for it to be green. A trader who's a little bit more comfortable losing may actually have more upside potential long-term in their career. You have to be willing to take risk and I need to get a little bit better at that. And if I do get better at that, I might be able to have some trades that end up turning into some really you know, nice winners because I was able to be willing to hold through a little bit of pain. So you guys, I'm sure, are going to have some comments on this and you know, do as you'd like. If you want to keep shorting strong stocks and you're willing to take that risk, go for it. You know, we need short sellers in the market. Short sellers shorting strong stocks can create those parabolic moves. So everyone has a place in the market. Um, and of course, if it works for you and you find success, you should stick with it. And I, of course, want to see people find success. So, um, you know, stick with whatever's working. But if you have something that's not working so well, you got to look really closely at that and back off of it. And it's also important to recognize that markets are always changing. So you have to be able to adapt to different markets. That's something that I haven't done as well at, as I could. Uh, I could really do better at easing off the throttle, hitting stocks to the long side when the market's cold. And you know what, maybe, maybe there's a place for me to start flipping short on some of these setups. If I trade it to the long side going up, maybe there is a very obvious place to flip short. Or maybe in a cold market when we're not seeing good resolution, it does make sense to look for some more um, opportunity to the short side. So you got to keep an open mind. All right. Well, I hope you found this interesting and uh, I will see you back here for the next episode of Driving with Ross. Not sure when it's going to happen, but um, I'll be back soon. So see you guys for the next episode. All right. Take it easy.